Here's the Triumph Stag. Easy to work on, simple to improve, and some nice performance and handling modifications can be made. Here's a list of uh, some of the things I've done, both performance, handling, and waterproofing. Performance, first of all. Many people have changed the engine, but properly built, maintained, the Triumph V8 is a very nice, quite high revving engine. Uh, the simplest uh, first modification is the tubular manifolds, as you can see down there. Stainless steel, a little bit more performance and a nice sound. Next modification is, which I consider somewhat essential, a properly positioned and modern expansion bottle. See how it connects to the original system. You can use plumbing connections here to tap into the top hose. It means any air in this top hose gets fed back to the tank and when the system cools water is drawn back from the expansion bottle. Um, the original expansion bottle was way down there which was below the level of the engine which meant if you had any slight water leaks and therefore air leaks as the engine cooled it would suck back air into the engine. And as the water pump, which is positioned in there, is quite high up on the engine, then eventually you can get air in the engine and the water pump will start to cavitate as it pumps because it's so high up. And you then lose the efficiency of the cooling water going around, which can lead to, lead to overheating. And with an aluminium cylinder head on an iron block, it can give you walking problems. Simple addition to this avoids all that. What else? Um, this engine I fitted the Holly four barrel carburetor, which you can just see under there. As a seven degree adapter plate, which keeps the carburetor nice and level, also a good idea. So a pancake air filter, cold air feed from the original cold air connection, um, homemade bit of stainless steel that she came from the um, kitchen extractor hood. The other nice pieces of equipment are these race ignition leads, which are four core, four wire wound cores, 10 millimeter wide in total. Makes a nice difference to the efficiency of the ignition. You can actually feel it in the um, running and the slightly in the performance. Next thing, and also essential if you've got a Holly carburetor, is a proper positive crankcase ventilation system that cross flows from one end to the other. Here we see where the air goes into the engine on one valve cover. This pipe connects to the bottom of the air filter. And if we go around the engine, this is where it's pulled out of the other uh, valve cover. Cover goes through a oil collector um, tank, not essential, but a nicety, and through onto a vacuum connection. So you can use a PCV valve here, or as I've done, a simple plumbing fitting to fine tune and adjust the amount of air that is drawn from the engine to optimise smooth running versus um, a nice piece of extraction of all the fumes from the engine. Uh, so what else have we got on here? Um, some modifications to the distributor to allow it to rev a little bit higher. Uh, a decent radiator, that one's been recored, same size radiator, just a uh, replacement core. Um, personally, use the modern antifreeze, the OAT orange antifreeze, which is designed for aluminium engines and the combination of aluminium and iron. Um, you won't be able to see, but the other modification that is a good idea on the back you uh, can get things called suspension tie bars which are bars that connect from the center of the differential over to the uh, over to each trailing arm and that stops the rear of the seat of the suspension twitching as you um, come off the power after having gone around the roundabout uh, well-known triumph stag um, issue uh, the next thing i want to talk about is um, proper design of waterproofing the body um, so the normal places that the Triumph stag will rust is on the front 
uh, panel under here. And the reason for that is uh, water will run down these gullies, collect on this front section, and normally you have a, uh, a join here between the top panel and the lower panel and the water goes straight underneath, sits there and rusts it all out. Here you can see I've sealed that join, resin sealed it, got a hole which is there connected to a tube for the water to drain out. Uh, that stops the issue of the rain going into the uh, front panel and rusting it. Uh, the other rust point is inside this wing. Normally, water will come down here, go through this gap between the wing and the windscreen panel. There's a little collection tray that diverts the water and allows it then to fall down on the inside of the wing. Uh, not only does the tray rust on the inside, but the water is actually then running down in between uh, this wing panel, this sill panel, and an inner, inner panel and it rusts this out, rusts the sill, and uh, it's completely unnecessary. If you just fill this gap with transparent silicon sealant, then you're diverting the water down into the gully or um, over the side and uh, into the gap between the doors where the rubber makes it um, fall to the bottom harmlessly. The other thing with uh, rust to watch is the channel where the, um, the hood sits. Uh, underneath here, is um, um, another hole in the channel with a tube attached that goes to the bottom of the car to takes the rain out that might get past the rubber seal. Make sure you also your rubber seal is in uh, good condition and goes all the way to the edge to stop the water getting in in the first place. Once it does get past this point into the channel, make sure your tube is clear. The other point that uh, we get a lot of rust is in the boot, on the boot floor reason for that I discovered is that uh, originally you'll have a uh, seam here. Here I, I completely welded and filled it and resprayed it but normally it would be a, a, um, uh, a spot welded seam between uh, the rear wing and the top panel and because of um, the issues of getting slight movements between these two panels you'll get a, a micro crack between the two. Water will then be drawn into it through a capillary reaction and will then drop out drop out under here into the boot onto the boot floor and then bust out the boot again complete can be easily avoided by sealing up the seam completely um, some people like it original but um, it maintains the same look of the car by sealing them up and um, gives you the rust proofing and a proper design of the modern car. Um, similarly, I've done the same on the front. Again, there would be a seal or seam between these two. Again, water would uh, drop down between the two and rust out the lower panels. So those are the, some of the simple modifications that I've done on my car. Uh, a lot of people have done similar modifications. Um, some more, some less. Uh, oh, there's one more. Um, I've actually taken off the viscous coupled fan, which saves a few horsepower, and replaced it with a fan, electric fan, which I'm not sure you can see, but we'll have a look. Ah, you might be able to see it in there, not sure. Anyhow, there's a two speed electric fan that actually came from a Volvo, very powerful. All sorts of different fans you can fit. But uh, this one is electronically um, controlled from the temperature of the radiator. I've actually attached the thermistor onto the radiator here. This goes off to an electronic control unit and some relays that are in the custom design unit that also um, will make the fan overrun when the engine is turned off. Because one of the times when the engine will get hot is where you've uh, been out for a good run and you come to a stop, turn everything off. Normally all of the, the cooling air will then stop completely but the engine is still hot and in fact getting hotter and that's when you can have problems with water boiling over, heads warping and so on. The simple fact of uh, keeping the fan running for another five minutes is um, quite a good idea and you'll also find that modern cars do the same thing for the same reason. Okay, that's uh, my small little talk on the Triumph Stag and some of the modifications I've done. Um, 
next video uh, will show how it sounds on the road. Uh, the addition of the tubular manifolds, the Holly carburetor, and on this particular car, I've also gone for the Tony Hart uh, straight through exhaust boxes, which makes it sound fantastic. Stainless steel, of course. And in the next link, we'll have a look at how that sounds. Thanks.